In this video, I wanted to break down a track I'm currently working on for my side project, Man From Another Place, which is more liquid drum and bass oriented. This is going to be a classic liquid drum and bass track, reminiscent of the type of stuff you might hear in the 1990s from artists such as LTJ Bookham and his seminal label, Good Looking Records. So I'll go through all the different sounds that I've made here. I've got a couple of different sounds that I've created in Anna 2, uh, a pad sound that I've resampled and I've thrown into sampler, done some down sampling techniques to get that really vintage, classic 90s sampled feel. I'm using a few samples here from Sonic Academy's drum and bass DNA pack, so some good stuff in there. We got some vocals that we've cut up, we've done some Akai style time stretching and stuff like that. So lots of classic techniques that I think are, are very era appropriate and I'm really excited to share them with you so let's hop right into the video I'll break down everything I've done in terms of the drum production the sound design and the arrangement that we've got so far and we'll take it from here all right so let's break down this track um, this is a project I'm working on for my side project man from another place which is uh, liquid drum and bass and ambient jungle type music so we'll start from the break here we'll just kind of play through the break and the drop and put those on loop as i explain what's going on in the track here um let's start with the pad which i think is probably the most involved sound in the track and it's probably one of the most important because it kind of sets the mood and the vibe and just gives the sense of atmosphere and liquidity to it so this was a patch that i made in anna 2 and i've combined a choir sample and a super saw oscillator together and I've resampled those. So let me explain what I did here. So I'm going to solo the original. We'll start back from the beginning of the break. Let me solo the original pad sound. This is what it sounded like. Nothing too special. Um, but I sampled a choir patch from the Spitfire Audio Labs plugin. Um, it's one of their free multi sample packs. I think it's just called Choir if you search for it. Um, but I just played a C3 note. And I sampled that, and you can see I have it loaded here on Sampler Oscillator 4 in Anna, and I just have that looping so I can sustain it forever. And then I've added a um, saw soft oscillator to it. I've added three unison voices and detuned it a bit. I've also added a phaser effect on the inserts here. And uh, I did a little bit of cutoff automation. You can see in the phaser automation, the dry wet is being automated as well. Um, and basically what I did is I resampled that. So over here we have the original uh, well, me sampling the original preset. So this is what it sounded like. So just one note, I just sampled an F sharp note. And then what I did is I brought this single note into Ableton's sampler and I was, I wanted to bring it back into Anna 2 and just put it on the sampler oscillator again, but I'm looping it and I wanted to loop it backwards and forwards and do this kind of ping pong looping technique. Let me turn this off really quickly and let's just hear what this sounds like. But the reason I wanted to do that is because you get this cool effect where when you're playing different pitches into a sampler like this, each pitch or each note is gonna trigger a pitch that is going to loop at a different rate. So right now it's just playing the single note, but if I turn this Ableton chord effect on, this is triggering, it's taking my single note that I'm playing, which is a D sharp, which is the root note of my uh, song here. It's taking that D sharp, but then it's adding these additional voices on top of it, turning it into a minor nine chord. But each of these different voices, each of these different pitches is looping at a different rate. So we get this cool constant, constantly sort of like randomized back and forth looping going on. It just adds a lot of life to this pad sound. And then I've added an auto filter and I'm automating the frequency on that. You can see, let's jump ahead to the break here. Um, and I've added some delay to that as well. It's worth mentioning, before I resampled it, I added this Tal DAC plugin. This is a really cool plugin for emulating the sound of recording audio into a vintage sampler and then playing it back. So I'm using a preset here for the S1000, which is the Akai S1000, classic 90s sampler. I've used this preset, this exact plugin, on several of the sounds in this project. So that is the pad sound there. Let's jump ahead to the break again. Um, Let's take a look at the bass. So we'll jump ahead to the drop here. So the bass is an Anna patch that I made, custom patch here. I'm just using a sine wave and I've got kind of a long release time on it. And the important part of this, solo it. The most important part of this is I'm using the mod envelope, mod envelope one to modulate the pitch of the oscillator. And so you can see I have this envelope shape where I have a fast attack, a short decay, a really low sustain, sustains all the way down, and then a short release. And I've got a macro here, which is being used to adjust the modulation depth. So it looks like the depth is just set to zero and it's not doing anything, but actually this macro has that turned up 
Um, so you can hear what that's doing is it's giving it a little bit of like a punch at the beginning of each note. It sounds almost like an 808. If I turn this off, you can almost barely hear it. So this is really going to help enhance the transient and help it just cut through the mix a little bit more. It's also going through a wave shaper on the um, insert effects here and a limiter as well, just to kind of keep the volume under control. The wave shaper is being used very, very subtly. And this is meant to emulate the, the sine wave test tone on an Akai S-Series sampler. This was often just sampled and used as a bass sound in a lot of uh, classic 90s intelligent drum and bass, liquid drum and bass. Running that through the TAL DAC again here, the S1000 preset, and then doing a little bit of sidechain compression from my kick drum. Let's take a look at the drums next, because there's kind of a lot going on with the drums here. So let's loop the drop. So the kick, I'm using Sonic Academy's Kick 2. I've grabbed a preset from the, um, the drum and bass pack, the drum and bass DNA preset pack called Pyrotechnique. And I've modified that a little bit. I've brought the level of the click down and I also adjusted this pitch envelope. I think I brought the initial pitch down a little bit just so it wasn't quite as sharp of a transient. I wanted to just soften it up a little bit and have this kick be a little smoother and just kind of tuck into the mix a little bit better. I didn't want it to stand out too much. Just kind of blend in with the break beats a little bit better. I've also got this loop here. This is from the drum and bass DNA pack as well. This is just a uh, hi-hat loop. I've just taken the first bar of it and looped it when we solo this one. Just taken the first bar of it and looped it. Um, and I've warped it in re-pitch mode, and this is kind of important too. I did the same thing on my break beat as we'll see in a minute here. But I find that when you warp in re-pitch mode, if you change the tempo of the original, it just gives it this nice pitch up, pitch down effect, which is very reminiscent of classic old school samplers. So um, it gives it a slightly different quality than if I were to just warp it in say beats mode or complex mode. Yeah, repitch just had a nice quality to it because it's being pitched up. So that's really all that's going on with that. I ran that through the TAL DAC again, that S1000 preset. Pushed out the sides channel a little bit with this mid-side utility. EQ'd it, just really isolating the high frequencies there and then sidechain compressing that to the kick so it ducks when the kick hits. And then we have the break beat arguably one of the most important parts of any good drum and bass track. So I've taken another sample from the drum and bass DNA sample pack here. Uh, this is a longer sample, as you can see, it's about four bars long. I just took the first bar of it. Let's find the original one here in my browser. This is the original sample. And this one sounded the closest to me to an Amen break. It sounds like it probably was sourced from an Amen break and cut up and processed a little bit. But I liked that first the first bar of it, because it just sounded clean and I wanted to be able to kind of cut up, cut it up and do my own thing with it. So I took the first bar of that. And then what I did is I put it into a simpler. So let's go over here to Ableton Simpler. And I switched Simpler's playback mode to slice mode down here. And I'm slicing by quarter note beat divisions. So basically each MIDI note, if I go to the MIDI clips that are now triggering this, each MIDI clip, if I play it in succession, let's jump ahead to the drop where it's not being filtered. Each slice is triggering, or each note I should say, is triggering a quarter note slice, and I'm using that to kind of mix things up in different ways. Got some fills and things. Let's go to this one here. Just re-triggering that C sharp one and then kind of fading it out with velocities there. Um, so yeah, this allowed me to just very quickly and easily slice up the break and do all kinds of cool variations with it. I'm running that through drum bus adding a little bit of drive and a tiny tiny bit of crunch which is just kind of like a mid and high range distortion most importantly here i'm using the transient shaper by turning this up to the right i'm enhancing the transients but i'm also pushing up the tails of each drum hit as well this is then running through ableton's redux it's doing something similar to that s1000 preset from the tal dac um, I'm not sure why I used this instead. I think I just like the quality of it when I brought the bit depth down to 12 and reduced the sample rate. This is then running through multiband dynamics and I'm using this just to push the mids and the highs up a little bit. I'm using upward compression on the high band and the mid band and I brought the ratio up. I'll kind of do a little bit more here. What that does is 
this upward compression setting where I've got the threshold set and let me reset back to where I had it, but I have the threshold set and then by pushing the ratio up, upward compression is preventing it from getting quiet when the signal goes below the threshold. So it's kind of like a backwards form of compression here. And that's just pushing the air out of the sound. We're just hearing more of that, like I said, the tails of the hats and the snares and things. It just adds a lot of excitement and energy to the breakbeat. I've EQ'd it, mostly leaving room for the kick and then just kind of cleaning up some of these mid-range frequencies. And I'm also automating this um, gate. I've put a gate on the drums. I think I did that back in the intro or in this groove section here. I set a gate up and it's automating just to turn on and off. But what that gate is doing is it's setting this threshold and it's basically just allowing us to hear just the tippy tops of the transient. So it feels like there's a little bit more open space in the drum loop versus when this is off, you hear all that stuff in the middle of the hits. So uh, for the early part of the track, I wanted the, the drum loop to feel a little bit more spaced out, a little more open, and then sort of fill out for the drop. So let's re-enable that. Um, I had that automated somewhere. I can't remember where, but anyway, we'll, we'll turn it back on and then make sure that that gate threshold thing, gate toggle is turned off. That's this uh, macro control is turning the gate on and off, so that should be good. I'm also filtering, got a low pass filter on the brakes here, which I'm using to automate through uh, the build section here. I'm using that also right after the intro. Just open that sound right up. I have a limiter after that, just to catch any stray peaks as we're kind of sweeping through the frequency spectrum with the high resonance. Some of those volumes are gonna get a little crazy, so this is just keeping things under control. And then the brake is also getting sidechain compressed to my kick drum, so that kick just sort of trumps everything, just really pops out when it hits amidst the other drums. And then on the drums group here, a little bit of additional processing, everything's being run through the TAL DAC. Then I'm using this um, flanger effect here, which I'm using just for fills and little turnarounds. You'll hear that come in, I just automated the dry wet. And the trick with this Ableton flanger I find is that if you use this button to invert the polarity of the wet signal, it just makes the effect a lot more intense. So that button is on there, it sounds really cool when it all hits. Um, jumping down here, I've got a couple of additional percussion sounds. We got this crash cymbal. This is just a really simple 909 crash. I think this is just from Ableton's core library. It's running through a parallel reverb. I'm using Ableton's Convolution Reverb Pro. This is a Max for Live device that's free if you own Ableton Suite. I'm using the TVC33 Bright Theater impulse response on that. Then I'm running it through a parallel delay using a quarter note delay. Pretty high feedback on that. So you can hear that cymbal like splash out after the dry hit there. EQ'd that to clean it up, clean out the low end, and then of course it's running through my TAL DAC. So everything's kind of running into this vintage sampler. Then we have this intro perk track. This is a fun one. So this is a drum rack. I've taken a few one shots from the drum and bass DNA pack, a few loops, and a few of these I've actually put in samplers, as you can see this one here, and I've reversed them. So when they trigger, they actually play backwards. I have a few additional one shots here from a Roland JV2080, a classic rompler from the 90s. The JV1080 and the JV2080 were used pretty extensively on uh, early drum and bass tracks, especially for their percussion sounds. They have drum kits built into them and like some of those, those classic like conga sounds and stuff. So I have just a couple of one shots from that and from the DNA pack as well. And then um, those are all running through the tail DAC, of course. I'm cutting the lows out. And then I'm also, this is really important, I'm running them through this big echo effect. So I got a nice quarter note delay on that. We'll kind of play it back again so we can hear those. Nice quarter note delay. And then I've also got reverb built into the echo. So I have that pushed up pretty high. The reverb is coming pre-delay. So I'm getting all the signals go through the reverb and then that wet reverb signal is getting delayed. And the dry wet's pretty high on this as well. So we hear a lot more of the wet process signal. And it's just creating these great little atmospheric hits to play in the background of the break and the build, and I use those in the intro as well. I have this utility here, I don't remember what I did with that. Uh, I, I swapped the channels here because I'm using a ping pong delay. Ping pong delay always hits first on the left. I wanted to hit first on the right. I have another ping pong delay somewhere that was hitting on the left. I just didn't want the two to clash. Um, moving down here to some additional synths. So I have this 
this little plucky lead here. This is actually Applied Acoustic Systems Lounge Lizard plugin. It's a little electric piano emulator. Um, LTJ Bukum was a heavy influence on this song. And he was uh, very well known for using electric piano sounds in his ambient, intelligent drum and bass music. And so I wanted to get some sort of electric piano homage tucked into the song here. So I got these little plucks from the Lounge Lizard. Um, I'm using, this is kind of important, I'm using this stereo tremolo effect. So you hear the sound kind of bounce back and forth in the stereo field every time it hits. That time it was on the left, then it kind of goes to the center and back over to the right. So it just creates this cool constant motion as it plays. It picks up a little in the drop, plays a little bit more of a developed melody there. That, of course, is then going through the Tal Dac. And then we're just EQing out the lows. Then I've got this lo-fi piano sound, which is common in a lot of modern drum and bass. You hear a lot of reverbed out pianos. So this is using Spitfire Audio's Labs, and I'm just using the Soft Piano Pack for this. That was a free multi-sample pack you can run in Labs. Labs is a totally free plugin, by the way, at least until they update it, uh, quote unquote, update it and upgrade it to Labs Plus when we're gonna have to pay for it. So at the time of this filming, Spitfire Labs is still free. I would go out and grab it while you can before they make us pay for it. Uh, but this soft piano is one of the many uh, instrument sounds that you can load into it and play back. This is basically a multi-sample instrument, kind of like contact, just a really nice sound. It's got a nice reverb to it. Uh, this knob here on the front panel is controlling the reverb. So quite a bit of reverb on that. And it's going through the Tal Dac, of course, and then getting low cut as well. Then moving on to the vocals, got a few more samples from the DNA, drum and bass DNA pack. Um, this is the big man lead. And I just, in this section here in the build, just kind of left it as is. Sounded good, worked. But then I started playing around with it here. Doing a little classic Akai style time stretching. You can't make a classic drum and bass track without doing it somewhere. So I've um, stretched the vocals out by two times. So to do that, I have this warped, as you can see, I've just hit this times two button twice. That means that it's time stretching it like crazy. So it thinks the original tempo of this is 692 BPM, which would be really, really fast, but I'm playing it at 168. So it's like, oh, well, you must be slowing it down a whole lot. So it's time stretching like crazy. And then what I've also done is I've used this texture warp mode and I've kind of tweaked the grain size and the flux parameters here to give it that granular time stretch effect that you would get from an Akai sampler if you were trying to do a time stretch on that. Here I've just increased the uh, time stretching by single factor here. I just hit the times two time once. So you see it's 346 BPM versus back here. It thinks it's 692 BPM. So just a slightly different effect. And he kind of gets through the phrase a little bit quicker there. Got a fun little bit here. Just taking the original tempo to original speed. I didn't time stretch it at all. Just the, the phrase, run the tempo. Then I've reversed it and I've automated this auto pan with a 16th note rate to just kind of gate the volume. Let's create a nice little turnaround there for the last half of the drop or the last quarter of the drop, I should say. Also got this vocal here, just these kind of sung vocals. These are from a longer sample from the drum and bass DNA pack as well. Let's find that one in the browser here. Uh, this one right here. And I just didn't really like that part of it, but I like the O's here. Right there and then right there. She has a little variation on how she sings it. So I just took those two little bits, <clears throat> pitched them down a little bit to have them fit the key of the track, which is D sharp minor. Um, and then they're, they're bussing through this hall reverb. I have a BM7 amp chamber convolution reverb preset on my return track B, giving those a little bit of space. I also ran them through the Tal DAC, of course. Let's pull that up quickly. Same preset, S1000. They're also going into the Sonic Academy SA76. I love this plugin for brightening up vocals. I'm just using the lead vocal two preset the limiting amplifier SA76 adds a little bit of saturation and distortion and limits the signal a little bit. Um, those vocals are also getting sidechain compressed to the kick, of course. 
I've got this gate that I actually didn't end up using. What does that sound like, though? That's actually really cool. I should have used that, but I didn't. Um, that's a gate that's getting side-chained to the breakbeat. But we've got some heavy delay on this as well. Quarter note delay, a little bit of EQing to clean up the low end and just push out the high mids, brighten it up a little bit. We already discussed this vocal. And then we just got a couple of effect sounds here. So the noise here, this is just a, a noise sweep, just a downward sweep of white noise, as you can hear. I'm using an auto pan here just to do some subtle left-right panning at a slow rate. But I'm also using another auto pan in a similar way to, I, to how I process that um, spoken vocal. I'm using this with a 16th note rate. I've got the phase turned all the way down. So it's just doing like a volume gate effect. And I'm using that here at the beginning of the drop. Let's hear like the, the lead into the drop. I'm just using it at the beginning of the drop to cut the white noise up and almost turn it into a percussive element to layer in with like those hi hats and the break beat. So it just adds a little extra excitement, a little extra energy to the whole shebang here. And then finally, we have this reverse cymbal hit. This is another sample from the drum and bass DNA pack. It's a longer sample, it's like a reverse cymbal crash, and then a long uh, 808 hit here. And I've just taken the reverse part I liked, and I've pitched it up quite a bit. I'm warping it in complex mode, pitched it up by a factor of 10, 10 semitones. And this is what it sounds like on its own. It's got a little bit of delay and reverb coming from my sends here. I've got that hall reverb again, the AM chamber A, BM7, AM chamber A preset on return track B. And then return track C, I have this echo delay. This looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. This is just doing a dotted eighth note delay, so slightly different delay time. It's filtered a little bit using the built-in filter. And I've also just added an EQ cutting the lows out of that as well. Um, but that was just a great little transition effect for the end of those sections, leading into my cymbal crash, which was up here. And that is pretty much it. So these elements, the pad and the bass in particular, the break beat, the amen break, I mean, those are really staple elements in this genre of liquid drum and bass. And then everything else is just stuff that I thought sounded really nice and added some flavor to it. The different leads, the lo-fi piano, kind of vocals. Um, but these are the elements you want to look for if you're getting into this specific genre. So as I think I mentioned earlier, this is from my side project, Man From Another Place. I do liquid, liquid drum and bass, ambient jungle, intelligent drum and bass, that type of stuff. So look out for more releases from that project soon. Thanks for sticking around and um, sticking with me through this breakdown. I hope you learned something new and happy making liquid drum and bass, classic liquid drum and bass.